the thing that I keep coming back to is the fact that I essentially won a big bet last year by Matt Corral not being a first-round pick. And we were like, oh, is Matt Corral going to go in the first round? Is Desmond Ritter going to go in the first round? And none of these guys even went in the second round. So, like, it, are, are we just trying to talk ourselves into quarterbacks being drafted in the first round or at the back end of the first round because it's more fun that way? Um, you want to see what team takes a big swing? I'm not too sure about that. I don't know anything about Hendon Hooker personally. Um, from what I understand, he's really intelligent, really smart, and he's probably killing killing it in interviews. And that's what teams are looking into. But a guy who's an older prospect coming off a torn ACL – in an offense that does not translate to the NFL at all, I struggle to see NFL teams falling over themselves to draft him. All across the fantasy universe, welcome everyone to the Two Point Stance, powered by FantasyPoints.com, and the Carolina Panthers are officially on the clock. It is draft week. What's going on, everybody? I'm Brian Drake at Drake Fantasy on Twitter, hanging with my pal, Mr. Joe Dolan, managing editor of FantasyPoints.com on the Twitter machine at FG underscore Dolan. Joe, this week we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to talk NFL draft props. We're bringing him back. I think it's his third appearance on the show. It's the grinder, Tom Brawley. Joe, how excited are you to have Tom here, and how excited are you to win? Well, well let's be honest. At least bet. We're not going to say win. <laughs> oh, oh. We're going to win. We are going to win some cash on this show today. Uh, I, I, I cleaned up on the draft last year, Drake. Um, oh, yeah. My big one was Matt Corral essentially not to be drafted in the first round, which in hindsight sounds absolutely ridiculous. And it was. <laughs> so um, I put a put a nice hefty wager on that one last year. Let's, so, let's hope Tom's that was a guru special. That was a, that was a John special. Hansen he, special. We weren't but... allowed to spread that one out, but he uh, he said uh, over 33 and a half, I, will, I would bet my house on it. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and he ended up going in the third round. And uh, I thought it was the fourth round. Wasn't it the first day, uh, you know, early in the fourth, I thought? Uh, well, whatever it was, the Panthers traded up for him, and well, yeah. we, we know how that worked out. I mean, he yeah. got hurt in preseason but um let's hope tom's got some props for us today drake I, I'm, yes. I'm excited to bet it um we're here on a tuesday you and i will be back on sunday um kind of doing a recap of everything from kind of a dynasty perspective we'll talk some redraft too obviously because the landing spots are going to be so so important this year because tom as, as tom knows and everybody knows it's not one of those classes where there is like transcendent talents at the wide receiver position, you know, like there's no Jamar Chase or Devonte Smith in this class. And some might, some might have Smith and Jigba similar to that, but it, it even at receiver, it's going to be so landing spot dependent and running backs always landing spot dependent. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a lot to break down uh, this weekend uh, from a skill position standpoint. So I'm excited to do that. Um, T bro, I know you're uh you're you're deep in the weeds on the bets, but uh we also had some news uh kind of come down the pike there yesterday that I think we probably should finally talk. finally yes. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers traded from the Green Bay Packers to the New York Jets. The Jets get, of course, Aaron Rodgers. There's a pick swap in the first round. The Jets uh go back two picks, they get the 15th selection and a 2023 fifth round pick which is 170 overall this weekend the packers uh will move up to 13 in that pick swap get a 2023 second round pick so this year their 42nd overall pick and then a sixth round pick and a conditional 2024 second rounder that could become a first rounder with some playing time uh, stipulations on Mr. Rogers. So I'll just throw it out to you guys initially. Tom, you're our guest. What do you think of finally this trade culminating between the Jets and the Packers? Uh, it was a long time coming. It, it always felt like it was going to get done here before the draft. You Teams try to get these deals done so they can swap picks. And I thought it was interesting the Packers moved up two spots. Uh, the Patriots are in front of them. They have some needs at potentially uh, receiver there. Packers aren't known for drafting receiver in the first round, but uh, you know that they're starting basically a rookie quarterback 
Uh, the receiving core is pretty weak. Uh, you know, with outside of Christian Watson, Romeo Dubs had some situ- you know had some spots last year, but could be a Jackson Smith and Jigba, Jigba spot. Could be a Dalton Kincaid, Michael Mayer spot. So I thought that was interesting. I think I even brought it up on this podcast the last time I was on that just getting extra picks. Maybe if they don't draft in the uh, wide receiver in the first round, maybe they could use some of those picks. There's a guy like DeAndre Hopkins out there. Uh, I, I think that, you know, they're getting some cap relief as well uh, with Aaron Rodgers coming off the books so they could take on somebody that's a little bit higher priced wide receiver. So I think that's something that we could be you know looking for on Thursday and Friday. Not necessarily the Packers MO, but those were my quick reactions for the Packers side of things. Uh, you know what? What did you think about the trade, Joe, for for the Jets side of uh, side of things? I mean, I thought they gave up a little bit more than I expected yeah. they would have to, um, but they were they were completely pot committed. I mean, Joe Douglas was asked point blank. I, God, it was probably at the combine. Um, he was asked point blank, like, what do you think about, what about Lamar Jackson, you know? And he said, well, we're, we're not going to negotiate in bad faith, essentially, with the Packers. So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of GMs around the league are, are be glad that he's a man of his word, but it kind of limited his options here. They had to get this done. I mean, they're burying Zach Wilson in public. I mean, Garrett Wilson's happy about Aaron Rodgers. Garrett Wilson, I saw yesterday, retweeted the Schefter tweet uh, about <laughs> about the. I, I don't know. I, I don't know why I found that just so funny. That like Garrett Wilson's in there hitting the retweet button. He's like, "Here's here. I got I got Aaron Rodgers." But you guys uh, see this news? <laughs> more than I expected they would have to. It is kind of easy for them to justify it. Um. Look, Aaron Rodgers is one year removed from back-to-back MVPs. So, did his play just fall off a complete cliff like Russell Wilson? I don't think so. A lot a large part of that can be tied to the fact that the Packers offensive line was banged up and he lost DeVonte Adams, which is kind of a big deal. The Jets have better receivers than the Packers did, of course, one of them being Alan Lazard who uh, Rogers personally basically demanded the jet sign. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a big win for the Packers. I think it's a win for the jets simply because the jets are relevant. Um, I, yeah, I had my jets fans texting me yesterday. They're, they're fired up. They're fired yeah, up about this. Uh, like my aunt's a jets fan who, um, she grew up with a Joe Namath poster on her wall. Um, I think that was like her first crush was Joe Namath. And, um, she does not like Aaron Rodgers at all. Like, but, but she threw in a, butt. <laughs> <laughs> he's good. So yeah. Uh, even jet, even jet fans who like, don't like Aaron Rodgers are like, you know, I mean, hey, that was best... like Ben Roethlisberger with the Steelers for a lot of years. Uh, he wins a lot of football games, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll put aside the other stuff. But yeah, the, the man can play some football. I'll say uh, the odds didn't really move. They, these were already kind of baked in, uh, plus fourteen hundred to win the Super Bowl. Now uh, that was you know when Detroit, you know the when he went on McAfee and said that he was going the line. You know the lines had already moved at that point. So I do think they're a little bit overvalued. Uh, nine and a half win total, uh, juice to like, my, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it was like minus 120, minus 130 at most books. But I will say, uh, he, he's kind of a creature habit. He needs to get used to his receivers. I think that was a big downfall of the offense last year. You only know, really had a rapport with <laughs> Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb. We know Alan Lazard will be in New York this year but it sounds like he's going to be willing to participate in off-season activities. I think that is something that we need to watch. He did not participate in any of that stuff last year. He was off, you know, doing his thing in California, you know, going in caves or whatever else he was doing. But it sounds like this year, uh, moving to a new team, that he's going to be willing to start to build a rapport with these guys in the off-season, which is going to be critical for spelunking. this team. Yes, spelunking. Yes, spelunking. Uh, yeah. Um, no, uh, I think uh, – it might have been uh, Rappaport or even Schefter said Aaron Rodgers' first practice with the Jets is going to be in the coming days. So, yeah. like, yeah, that that's really important. Um, I, I, he was going through the motions last year. I guess he didn't 
he didn't really have the F U mentality that he had when they drafted Jordan love anyway, and kind of spurred him to back to back MVPs. Wonder if he'll, he'll have a little bit of that this year. Um, it is hard to shake the vibes that just like the Broncos, the jets just traded a premium to be the third best team in their division. Um, <laughs> In Look the at Broncos. the defenses he has to go against now compared oh, to know. what he used to go against in, in the in NFC the... North. Everybody is head and shoulders better than mm-hmm. what he's coming from. You know, in the Broncos case, they were the worst team in their division. I I think the Jets roster is too talented for that. Um, but I, it, the Jets kind of backed themselves into a corner. They had to do this move. They, they weren't going to be on Lamar Jackson. They had no interest in Jimmy Garoppolo, it seemed, um, once this Aaron Rodgers thing kind of went down – the wire um so look the jets are better for it and from a rankings perspective this is a fantasy podcast of course i already had tom and drake i already had garrett wilson in my second round like i have i have him 20th overall um i was ranking the new york jets based on the assumption that aaron Rodgers was going to be their quarterback so i really didn't make uh, a whole lot of adjustments here two points one i think we could all be very very low on alan lazard Because that's his guy. He came over, he got paid, and there's nothing written that says he has to now target Garrett Wilson, you know, 250 times. Nothing says that. Like, Lazard is his boy. And also, are we getting the Aaron Rodgers last year of his 26 touchdowns and, oh, by the way, his year 35 and 36 when he only threw 25 and 26 touchdowns? Are we really thinking at 40 years old, we're going to get those outlier 37, 48 touchdown seasons when he won the the MVP? Like, I think you, like you said, Joe, you traded a premium to get a guy who's not even going to throw you 30 touchdowns this year. But for this Jets and this defense, maybe that's good enough. But can you outscore Buffalo and Miami and then everybody else in that AFC? I'll, I'll have you know that they currently have, from a talent perspective, sans Josh Allen, in my opinion, a better offense than the Buffalo Bills. Let's just look like, I mean, my, Miami, Miami's receiver core is obviously ridiculous, but look, Buffalo has Stefan Diggs, and, and, you know, this was a point that Greg Cosell made a lot. Josh Allen was masking a lot of deficiencies with that offense. So I think the Jets see their roster and like we have a lot of ability here we just didn't have the guy to drive the car now they got the guy to drive the car yeah i I don't think they want him to be the guy that throws 40 touchdowns they got a defense that can win them a lot of games we're gonna have Brees hall who was on the verge of being a top five running back last year if he wasn't already you know he was on a tear before he tore his acl uh i think they would be quite happy with a guy that is throwing 25 to 30 touchdowns and he gets back to you know, his low, you know, low INT rate, you know, he was up, up at two and a half per 2.2% last year, which is real high for him. Get back to, you know, just throwing five or six interceptions, keeping the ball safe. Uh, and, you know, getting that 30 touchdown mark, I think they'd be quite happy with the defense that they have and with the running game that they should have this year. Well, let's talk about what we're here to talk about. And it's betting on the NFL draft. I'm looking so forward to this, Mr. Brawley, because Thursday night, not only is it the NFL draft, it's the first night of my golf league. So I will be slamming down IPAs on the golf course, making bets. Everything that we go over here on the show, I'm going to put in on my phone and lay some money on. And I'm just going to watch the money come in uh, and I'll be just the drinks will be on me all Thursday night. Thanks to the grinder. So let's start right at the top. Carolina's on the clock. There, we're going to use FanDuel for most of this, folks. Uh, just for reference, Bryce Young is minus 1200 to be the number one overall pick. I mean, is there any way you think this goes sideways and they they throw a curveball and it's CJ Stroud? Or we know it, it's Bryce Young here, you don't even really have to bet it because you're not going to win any money. Yeah, I, I it it opened up uh, basically when the Panthers moved up to number one. Ever the thinking, the conventional thinking was that Frank Reich has this prototype that he wants at quarterback, uh, big and sturdy. Uh, if you look back at the Colts qu- uh, quarterbacks over the last few years, Jacoby Brissett, Andrew Luck, Matt Ryan, Carson Wentz, they all fit a mold. And everybody kind of thought C.J. Stroud was that guy, and he moved. He was minus 300 for 
basically a good three or four weeks. And uh, things started to turn in early April. Uh, Chris Mortensen was really the one uh, who kind of, you know, started to started that trickle when he said on one of the ESPN shows that, you know, he's hearing Bryce, Bryce Young, number one. And Mort's not a guy that's going out there spouting off anything that he's uh, that he's hearing. So people started to hear that. That was even a discussion on Twitter that day that, oh, man, one thing out out there can really flip the odds. But uh, that's that's these markets, um, just a little bit of information or even just, a you know, a big bet or two. Uh, can move these markets. And ever since then, it's been Bryce Young, pretty heavily favored. Uh, you know, it was only minus 200, minus 300 uh, up until a few weeks ago. And over the last week here, things have really settled in where it looks like Bryce Young is is the guy to, the guy here uh, for the Carolina Panthers. The, the visits, that's when he canceled the rest of his visits. That was kind of the, the final nail in the coffin. Mm-hmm. The Panthers last week said, uh, we, you know, they, they said that they didn't tell him that, but, uh, you know, I think people probably got the idea that uh, somebody somebody got in his ear that said, uh, you don't have to worry about sliding down the draft board. You're, you're going off the board. Yeah. What's, one, what size so. shirt do you wear, kid? What size jersey? Is it, yes. uh, it's a youth what do you want large? On the back we the got it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the Devontae Smith size jersey for, for Bryce Young. I, You know, I think a lot of this kind of came to the – um, the Peyton Manning versus Ryan Leaf kind of debate, although none of these guys, I don't want to say they're on the same level of prospect as Peyton Manning. Um, and while, of course, Bryce Young had the deficiency of his size, it feel, feels like the other discussions were trying to talk, trying to talk yourself out of Bryce Young, and they just couldn't get there. Um, I thought I. I've said all along, I thought the team that passed on Bryce Young was going to eventually regret passing on Bryce Young. And it doesn't look like anybody's going to pass on Bryce Young at this point. So I, I think we could probably move on from this one yeah. since this one's been kind of cut and dry, I, I, I think, from uh, for, for the last couple of weeks. Here. Although I got I to gotta say, although it, it's got to feel like to Texans fans that they passed on him at number one. What in that stupid oh. week 18 <laughs> game against the Colts that cost him the chance? Hey, I'll, I'll take it. I had a Chicago Bears worst record last year, uh, twelve to one. I, I was a very happy man uh, early January, whenever the Texans somehow won that game. But now it's uh, coming back to haunt that franchise. Uh, Lovey Smith obviously got canned right after that, and uh, it's not been a great couple of months for the Texans, even though they got a bunch of picks uh, early in the draft. So number two is the Houston Texans. Now, Houston, let's be honest, Houston needs a quarterback. But there's been this smokescreen, guys, out there being led through the media. I think, you know, they're they're really feeding Schefter, you know, friend of fantasy points, Adam Schefter. Uh, I think a lot of stuff because we see him on air saying, don't be so sure Houston's taking a quarterback here at, at number two. And, you know, they do have another pick down at 12, but – on the draft king or excuse me FanDuel Will Levis is plus 210 CJ Stroud plus 300 and then you can throw in a Will Anderson you can throw in uh was it Tyree Jackson there there's some options here at number 2 Tom do you think that the Texans really bypass quarterback and go defense here maybe even trade the pick I I think I think it is an option I I think these GMs they're not I don't think they're completely sold on one of these other quarterbacks uh, you know, that we're seeing Stroud fall down. They're really into these, the S2 test, apparently. Um, and and once you s- select a quarterback, you kind of start your own clock. You know, you, you have four or five years to get things going in the right direction. And if you pass on the quarterback early in the draft, maybe that, you know, stops your clock for another year. Uh, the pressure isn't ne- necessarily on. I mean, but I'm with you. Like, how do you, You don't get the – I know the Texans have picked early in the draft the last couple of years. They've been one of the worst teams. But you're not going to continue to get these opportunities to draft at the top of the draft and potentially land one of these, you know, top three or four quarterbacks. Uh, I think you got to take your chance, and it it looks like it's going to be Will Levis if they do. Uh, There's also a possibility somebody trades up here. There has been some smoke here, but uh, they could go a number of different directions. If I had to – if I had to bet on something, I would I would go with Levis. I think that they Oof. they I, I I don't love it either. I Levis is my fourth quarterback out of these guys, but 
you know, just based on everything that we're hearing and, um, you know, Richardson does not seem to be in the picture here at number two. Uh, you know, they don't seem to love Stroud. Maybe that's a smoke signal, but uh, What's Levis wrong with seems CJ like the Stroud? one. Joe, you're a Big Ten guy, right? You, you watch that's, tons of Big that's Ten. That's what's CJ Stroud with... is legit good. That's what's wrong with CJ Stroud. No Ohio State quarterback has ever been good. I mean, that. Let, let's be honest. Uh, that fold under pressure. Uh, I don't know about this S two test. They, they play with the best about. receivers every. Year. I mean, I mean, literally his receiving. Think about his Ohio receiver. State. Yeah, will be better. I mean, that receiving court would legitimately be one of the best receiving courts. No, they, in the they would be the NFL. best in the NFL. They're going to have, you know, Marvin Harrison's son, who's going to be a yeah. top five pick. Jackson Smith and Jigba, the only reason he's fallen into the teens is because he didn't play last year because of hamstring injury. Otherwise, he'd be a top 10 pick. Uh, mm -hmm. Garrett Wilson, rookie of the year, and uh, Chris Olave, who was the runner up for rookie of the year. I mean, it's literally, it would be better than any receiving core in the league here in the next like two to three years. Guys, I have to throw this out there, by the way. Because we're talking betting on the NFL draft, and oh, I would bet number two. Every place I'm looking does not have their top five draft picks odds on the board right now because yeah, of that's... Reddit. Yeah, I was wondering what what what, what was the news here? Because I see Tyree Wilson's plus four thirty now. There's some um, uh, there's been some line movement. Reddit had on our sports book one hour ago. A, a gentleman by the name of Sale Agreeable 2834, could be a oh young boy. lady, I'm not sure, posted that Will Levis is plus 4,000 to be the number one overall draft pick, and he is telling friends and family that Carolina is going to draft him. So all the sports books were getting hammered on this and decided to take the lines off the board. Oh, my God. Yeah, if this Will is Levis could play the season. If Will Levis could play the Mac every week in the NFL, he'd be in the Hall of Fame tomorrow. But they don't. And, you know, Will Levis – Joe, you're a Penn State guy. Will Levis couldn't get on the field for Penn State couldn't for a few years. Couldn't beat out Sean Clifford. Um, and, look, I, I'm – you know, there, 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 there got to a point – Tom's a Penn State guy too, by the way. Oh, absolutely. Um, it got to a point where, you know, there was like this, oh, should, should Penn State have kept Levis and – and then all of a sudden, you realize they probably wouldn't have been a whole lot better with them. I mean, they won the Rose Bowl this year. I mean, were they going to do anything more than that with 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 Will Levis? I I don't think so. Like I don't. And that there, there is a legitimate argument. And I, and I was reading, you know, Bob McGinn's draft piece up at Go Long TD, and that was part of the scouts' evaluation. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you know Joe Flacco got benched at Pitt. You know, like he couldn't beat out Tyler Palco at Pitt. So like, that doesn't mean a guy can't go somewhere else and have huge success. Look at Joe Burrow. Um, but it is part of the evaluation. Yeah. I mean, you look at Will Levis and it's not, this isn't the Will Levis show. He to me is a guy who everyone just wants to look at the body type and they want to look at comparables. And then, to me, this is a big draft for comps. Everyone's saying, well, this guy it comps to this guy. This guy comps to that guy. <clears throat> well, it's that's great and all because, you know, we're trying to fill airtime. But who is he really? Like, is he a legitimate player? Like, uh, you know, I, I see people saying, oh, maybe Will Levis has a little Carson Wentz in him. Like, n Carson Wentz is was way better than Will Levis could ever dream to be in college. And Carson Wentz right now has a step out the door of the NFL. Like, I, I don't know. I, I don't buy it. He didn't play good in any big games. I get he was on a terrible team and he was a little beat up, but I'm not staking my franchise on this kid who, I, I mean, show me when he was ever good. I mean, at least Anthony Richardson, you could say, hey, he's electric athletically and played in the SEC, uh, you know, and had a couple of good games uh, against some big time competition. You can't say that about Will Levis. I'm not staking my reputation on this kid. <laughs> I, I'm with you guys. He's my, he's my fourth guy. I on the I will say on the positives. Let's give him some positives here. He uh, you know he's the NFL is moving more towards these dual threat quarterbacks. He showed that he could do that. He couldn't really do it last year behind his offensive line. It was a, a complete mess. He lost a lot of his weapons. Uh, he did did play in a, like a pro style offense. I know that's been a, a one major positive for him coming into the league here. Um, you know, prototypical size. He apparently tested really well with the S2. 
so so there are some positives here, but yeah, I, I, just not enough production for me at the college level. When things got a little bit rough last year, I, I I'll give him some positive that he you know was playing through injuries and wanted to be out in the field last year, but uh, things started to add up against him, and you know he couldn't succeed. So. Uh, you land with a team, uh, you know, this pick inside the top five. Typically, you're going to be playing in some rough situations. We'll see if he can develop in in, in probably adverse situation there. Uh, let me throw this at you guys. Let's have some fun. These are total number of players at that position drafted in round one. I'm going to throw these at you guys. Let's make some money. All right. Okay. 2023 NFL draft. Total number of quarterbacks drafted in round one again this is according to FanDuel Sportsbook the over is 4.5 at minus 160 the under four and a half is plus 120 so really the the vibe here is do you see five quarterbacks being drafted in round one so Hendon Hooker would likely have to be drafted at the end of round one to make this pay off Joe let's start with you I I would take the under um, but the thing that obviously scares me is the old Lamar Jackson situation, a team that has a high to mid second round pick trading it back into the first round simply so they can get the fifth year option. Of course, Hendon Hooker will be 74 years old when his fifth year <laughs> option is, is to be exercised. But, um, I, I, as I sit here, 12 years older than he is, um, uh, but I, I, that's the thing that scares me. We're getting some of the Hendon Hooker hype, you know, but the thing that, the thing that I keep coming back to is the fact that I essentially won a big bet last year by Matt Corral, not being a first round pick. And we were like, Oh, is Matt Corral going to go in the first round? Is Desmond Ritter going to go in the first round? And none of these guys even went in the second round. So like, it, are, are we just trying to talk ourselves into quarterbacks being drafted in the first round or at the back end of the first round? Because, it's more fun that way. Um, you want to see what team takes a big swing. I'm not too sure about that. I don't know anything about Hendon Hooker personally. Um, from what I understand, he's really intelligent, really smart, and he's probably killing killing it in interviews. And that's what teams are looking into. But a guy who's an older prospect coming off a torn ACL in an offense that does not translate to the NFL at all, I struggle to see NFL teams – falling over themselves to draft him. Yeah, I'm with you. And Joe, we do see this every year. It's at least the last couple of years. Um, uh, I mean, I, I can even, you know, Will Greer was getting some hype and uh, you, you noted the the guys from last year. We, we get these guys every year that, you know, they start to, as the draft nears, they get start to get talked up a little bit and then they fall to the third or fourth round. So uh, the second round has kind of been, just a no man's land for quarterbacks anymore if teams think you can be a starting quarterback at the nfl level you're going to get selected in the first round they want that fifth year option to you know we've seen it with these teams uh we saw it with last year with the eagles uh get to the super bowl with a quarterback on a rookie contract you can spend your money elsewhere and build up a good team around him so if if there's one team or a couple teams that think that he could be a starting nfl quarterback he will be selected in the first round uh, I just have serious questions. And basically, next year is a red shirt year. He's already an older prospect, and, and the offense is, just does not translate at all. So uh, very limited production even before uh, the last couple of years. He, I mean, he was a, a quarterback at Virginia Tech and flamed out. Started there uh, back in like 2018. He, I mean, he's an old man coming into the league here. So um, I lean towards him not being a first-round prospect. Uh, I would look at the uh, plus price here under four and a half, but there's certainly a lot of smoke. I, I, Minnesota's been the one that's tied to them the most, but they don't have a lot of picks. They traded away a lot of picks with that Hawkinson trade. I mean, they have some major holes at receiver after cutting Adam Thielen. Uh, defensive back is a major issue as well. Like you're going to spend your one first round pick and then you got to sit out for a couple of rounds and, uh, you're going to spend it on Hendon Hooker. I, I just, I just don't see it. So uh, maybe there's another team that uh, is interested in them, but uh, I, I, I'd lean towards the under, under four and a half here. I'm looking at Brett Whitefield's 2023 top 150. We have over at FantasyPoints.com uh, for all of the draftable players. He's got Will Levis at 22, Hendon Hooker at 23 as QB five. So 
you know, not to say that's exactly how they could go in the first round, but pay attention to these teams at the back of the first round, Philadelphia, uh, Kansas City, who could possibly trade out if somebody wants to get that fifth year option uh, for Mr. Hendon Hooker. All right, running back. This is an easy one because it's basically it's Bijan plus one total number of running backs drafted in round one. Uh, the over one and a half is minus 130. Uh, the under is minus 102. So, I mean, here we're looking, are we going to get Jameer Gibbs uh, going off the board? There's a lot of talk about him lately. Joe, what do you think here? Do we get anyone else besides Bijan in round one? Well, I think this is interesting. Now you're looking at FanDuel. I'm looking at DraftKings and DraftKings right now has Jameer Gibbs minus 175 to go in the first round. Mm. So if you think that's a valid bet, why don't you just take the running backs over one and a half? Because I mean, now FanDuel's odds on Jameer Gibbs might be different, but we know B. John Robinson's going round one like that. There is, um, um, uh, I, I mean, I've heard I've heard draft Nick say like the floor for him is Washington at 16. So the, the bet is essentially does Jameer Gibbs go in the first round? And it seems like a lot of folks are thinking, you know, the Bengals could be in play for Jameer Gibbs at the end of round one. The Eagles could be in play for Jameer Gibbs at the end of round one. If the Eagles don't draft B. John Robinson, um, we know what my circumstances are. If the Eagles do draft B. John Robinson. Oh, we'll get um, into that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's the next topic. Well, yeah. I, I think Jameer, I think Jameer Gibbs in this draft class, and here's the here's the the key. We we have GM saying, oh, we got 15 first round grades. I'm reading Bob McGinn's you know draft series. Oh, this is you know I've got 13 first round grade scouts. Uh, this is a bad first round class. Teams will convince themselves on a Bijan Robinson, on a Jameer Gibbs. All right, yeah, they're running backs, and and God knows you know Twitter thinks teams should be drawn and quartered if they draft a, a running back in the first round. But I think teams will probably talk themselves into, oh, Jameer Gibbs, we have a near first round grade on this guy. And the only reason he's not a first rounder is because he's a running back. Well, all of our first rounders were off the board by the 20th overall pick. We're just going to take the guy that we have an elite grade on. And so yeah. I think Jameer Gibbs is a first rounder. Yeah, this is a prop that has moved a lot in the last 24 hours. This was a Todd McShay report yesterday. Uh, the over was a big plus price uh, up until yesterday. Uh, he had a, in, he had a news and notes or rumors and on on ESPN Plus, and you know he heard that a name that kept coming up to him uh, talking to people over the weekend uh, was Jameer Gibbs, uh, you know, other scouts and other team personnel kept asking about where's Jameer Gibbs going to go. So he was adding two and two together that, Hey, probably these teams are, you know, they, they want this guy. They need to know where he potentially could be going. So as Joe noted, there was, there's quite a few teams that, uh, you know, stand out as potential landing spots in the, the back, back half of the, the first round, um, you know, the Cincinnati Bengals stand out the most with the Joe Mixon situation going on right now. Uh, so over one and a half, I, uh, <laughs> I'm still a little, you know, these teams with running back, they, they're they always worried about drafting them too early and, you know, you're kind of locked into them. So, uh, but if this is a good piece of information, then over one and a half at minus 130 is still probably a pretty good price here. Uh, Gibbs is, you know, he's has certainly been a guy that's been rising up here and, you know, in that McShea report, I believe there was, you know, he was saying that the uh, the personnel think that there's not as big a gap between Gibbs and Bijan Robinson as the the public thinks. I I think that might be a little bit overblown. I think Bijan's a pretty unique prospect at the, at the top of this draft at the position, but uh, Gibbs certainly has his appeal. You know, he's been getting the Alvin Kamara comps uh, coming in 15 pounds lighter than Alvin Kamara, but uh, you know he, he could be deployed in a similar type of way. Um, and, you know, I, I can see why there's been some buzz building around him, especially in a, in a draft where there's not a lot of first round grades for guys. Uh, maybe these one of these running backs sneaks into the back half of the, the first round. Joe Bijan Robinson, if he goes to the Philadelphia Eagles at 10 overall, you have said on this program publicly, you will get drunk on Evan Williams and jump off your roof. It is in stone. Will it happen? I, I don't think so. On FanDuel, the prop here is Bijan Robinson draft position over under 12 and a half. 
So if you look at those landing spots at 12 and a half, well, 12 is Houston and 13 is now Green Bay. I don't think either one of those teams necessarily needs to draft a running back. So could he go? I, I don't see him going before them. Philadelphia, Tennessee, Atlanta, maybe? Mm, uh, Atlanta's the one that stands out to me. I don't know if I'm going to have to worry about Bijan even being there at 10. I think Arthur Smith's going to fall in love with the freaking guy. And here's the thing. Atlanta just traded. You could argue Atlanta had a need. Now, personally, I think Atlanta drafting him is way less justifiable than the Eagles doing it from a roster perspective, okay? I think Atlanta Atlanta needs more help. Atlanta, I mean, Atlanta. Atlanta's a sneaky quarterback spot. You know, they're exactly. not really getting a whole lot of buzz. They but should take Anthony Richardson. I think – there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of lines connecting Arthur Smith saying this guy's my new Derrick Henry. Oh, and by the way, I can use him in the passing game too. Now, it, it, here's the thing: Tyler Algier is coming off a thousand yard rookie rookie season. Maybe the one of the quietest. He only scored three touchdowns, so he wasn't like a great fantasy asset. Mm -hmm. But you know, maybe one of the quietest thousand yard rookie seasons of all time. Like nobody's really on him in dynasty, and I think Bij the the Bijan Specter. Um, is is kind of haunting that that organization right now. Um, I don't think the Eagles are going to do it. Um, the hope, though, is man. I just really, really hope Drake. You and I discussed this on on a podcast last week. I just hope the Patriots don't get a shot at them because that would be. Ugh. There are very few disgusting <laughs> landing spots for Bijan Robinson from a fantasy perspective. That is one of them. Yeah, Joe. I... I, I don't think the Eagles are even in the top three. If we're looking at the 12 and a half here, I think I think the Falcons are the, the top concern. I, I think they might. I I, I've, I have a bet later uh, we can touch on. I have top 10 for Nolan Smith. It, it was a plus price when I got it. I think he could be a, a landing spot for the, the Falcons. They really need uh, help pressuring the quarterback last year. One of the – just the, the worst team in the last two years, getting to the quarterback, getting sacks. I think they have much more pressing needs uh, outside of Bijan Robinson, but I also there's there's just these constant rumors about Derrick Henry getting traded. Uh, no, maybe that is like the bombshell of uh, of day one. You know, Derrick Henry gets moved somewhere, and they take Bijan Robinson with the eleventh pick. Is you know kind of the uh, you know the, the next uh, you know Derrick Henry for the for the Tennessee Titans. Uh, the Texans are also apparently enamored with him. At number twelve, uh, that you know, if he's there, uh, and they get their maybe they get their quarterback with that first pick, uh, Bijan Robinson could go to the Texans here. So, uh, twelve and a half is his draft position. It's juiced mm -hmm. up minus uh, minus one sixty, I think, or uh, yeah, one sixty two to the under. The, okay, yeah, I, I would look towards the under. I I, I do think he's going to find somewhere, and we've touched on it multiple times that there's just not a lot of guys with first round grades here. You know, Bijan. He's like the top prospect on some people's boards. He's he's like a consensus top five uh, on these teams' big boards, uh, or at least like the national media. And um, so he's he's widely regarded as one of the best prospects. There's not a lot of you know top end prospects in this year's class. So even with running back being devalued in the league, I, I think he still goes relatively early. We'll we'll say in those first twelve picks. I can't wait to see maybe what the host of Legends of the Hidden Temple or Guts or Double Dare come out with the night before the draft with their, you know, insider trading notes like, uh, you know, Baja Biamila did from, <laughs> what is he, a Ninja Warrior? So, you know, we'll see what happens. Maybe uh, Mayim Bialik from Jeopardy has some inside info, but, uh, you know, we'll see with this Derrick Henry news. I want to move over, guys, to tight end. Total number of tight ends drafted in round one. And the line here is two and a half. If you go over two and a half plus 198, under two and a half, 280. You never hear this prop any other year. But this year being, well, maybe just a down overall class in general, but it's a really good tight end class with Mayer and Kincaid and Darnell Washington, Sam Laporte out of Iowa, who probably ends up going in the second round. But two and a half on all these tight ends. I'm not a guy that wants to spend a back-end first-round pick on the third-best tight end in the class, if that's me. But I don't know. What say you guys? Tom, let's start with you. 
Yeah, I, I like the under here. This has been moving a little bit. It, it it had dropped down. There was some buzz that maybe Darnell Washington came uh, would would sneak into that back into the first round. Sam Laporte has been getting some buzz, uh, but uh, yesterday Charlie Campbell from Walter Football had a you know insider notes that uh, both Darnell Washington and Sam Laporta had some iffy uh, medical. You know, you know, there's some mm. there's some red flags there. So that's why this prop has been rising here. It's now minus 280 to to the under here. That's that's the direction I look. Uh, even Dalton Kincaid, you know, there's some scary. I, I have him as the first tight end because I think he's, you know, kind of a unicorn in terms of, you know, potential as a receiver at the position. Uh, Michael Mayer is more of a complete, uh, complete tight end who will help, you know, as a run run blocker uh in protection and you know he's certainly capable as a receiver but there's even some red flags about Kincaid here um got hurt towards the end of the last season has a back issue a uh, bit of an older prospect but uh so there there's some red flags with some of these tight ends so uh, I, I would look towards the under here I still like Kincaid he's getting the plus price uh plus 130 to be the first tight end off the board I think one of these teams could fall in love with his potential in the passing game but uh, for the for the tight ends overall, I think we're going to see a probably a, a very big run on them in the second round. I think teams, can, I agree. You know, it's more palatable in the second round uh, going after tight ends, and there's certainly enough team. We've you know, got the Cowboys, we got the Bengals, Packers need one, but uh, the Chargers have been linked to a tight end as well. So there's certainly enough teams, especially in the back end of the first round. But I think teams will hold off, wait to the second round, and try to get their guy there. I agree with Tom. I think it's. I think this is the the under bet. Um, I think you, Tom, the tight end run is going to be like the old, and maybe this year it's the case too. The old running back run. We, if we in the fantasy industry, we're always like waiting for day two because that's when the running backs start to come off the board, and we're like, right. oh, you know, this team could draft one. But this year, I think tight end is going to be that position on in round two where teams are like, well, we didn't we didn't take them and. In the first round, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna take them here in the uh, in the second round. I, you know, Brett Whitefield's got Dalton Kincaid at thirteen overall on his board. Um, his next his next tight end is actually Luke Musgrave uh, from Oregon State at twenty eight, who, who has the most medical concerns. I didn't even bring him yeah. up. He's he only played two games last year, and he could he could never get on the field of Oregon State. He's a total projection. I wonder if so, I wonder if one of these teams at the back end of the first round, like Cincinnati, uh, Tom, for instance, would talk themselves into Darnell Washington from Georgia, who's got the measurables but no production because he played behind the next great like NFL, the next Kyle Pitts um, in Brock Bauer. So we'll, we'll see if Darnell Washington is one of those guys who sneaks into the Maybe the Bengals round. draft him and develop him into an offensive tackle. <laughs> I could see the Bengals doing that. I mean, that's... Yeah, like, potentially. That was, they need one. That was a lot of talk, even whenever he landed at Georgia, that he should be, you know, developed into a tight end, uh, d developed into a tackle, but he was insistent that he wanted to continue to play at tight end, and um, I don't think that's going to happen, but uh, you can certainly see... I mean, he's got such a huge frame, and uh, never really got to be much of a receiver at Georgia. I, I don't know if that was necessarily all because Brock Bowers is there. Um, he's not, you know, he's, he's certainly athletic for his size, but uh, not like the true burner. You know, he's, you know, he, you're not going to have loose enough hips at that size to really shake off. Uh, I, I do have some concerns about him as a receiver at the next level, uh, but uh, we'll see if he sneaks in. But I, I would lean towards the under. I think Mayer and Kincaid are going to go day one, but I, I I see these teams holding off until day two for the rest of these tight ends. All right, last of these total number picks, and it's wide receiver, and the number here on FanDuel is three and a half. The over is minus 106. The under is minus 125. If you go by the, the now eh, just about a week old fantasypoints.com staff mock draft, Joe, you were a part of this. You guys had five receivers go in the first round in this draft, whereas they are looking here only at three and a half. Brawley, uh, what do you think here? I don't know if you had a chance to take a peek at the staff mock, but I mean, yeah, I'm trying to remember guys. who the fifth receiver was. I, I can't like we got Dave Flowers, and uh, at the end, 
da, 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 Jalen Hyatt. Jalen Hyatt. Got him. Uh, okay. Yeah. I for the I Bills. See that happening. Um, I I kind of like the over here. Uh, over three and a half. Um, you know, there's certainly some current. We're, we're talking about Jameer Gibbs maybe sliding into the first round. We're, there's talk about Hooker. We're talking about the tight ends. There, there's only so many picks for these guys to sneak in here. So, uh, but I would still lean towards the under here, uh, uh, towards the over here. I think, you know, Jackson Smith and Jigba is locked in. I, I think he's a the best. You know, he's a heavy favorite to be the first wide receiver taken for a good reason. I think he is the first wide receiver taken in the mid teens there somewhere. Certainly enough teams between like the Texans, uh, Packers, Patriots, right in that range, you would think might want to uh, grab them there. Uh, Jordan Addison, I I gave out a prop on him under 23 and a half. He, uh, he has links to the Los Angeles Chargers. The, the wide receivers coach was working at Maryland, recruited him to go there. He was set to play there. Uh, he went to Pitt at, uh, you know, later in his recruitment. So Addison followed him to Pitt. Uh, you know, I have an article linked in, in that, uh, write up that, you know, they're, they're be- like father and son. So uh, I could really see Jordan Addison potentially landing with Los Angeles. They've been linked to really needing a wide receiver or tight end, really trying to mac- maximize Justin Herbert's, uh, window here before, you know, he gets his big extension here very soon. Um, uh, Zay Flowers is the one I, I, he's been all over the map here in the first. Some people absolutely love him. Some see him kind of falling out of the first round. Patriots are apparently en- enamored with him. Um, I know Hanson loves him. He's talked. To I him know. A lot. Yep. John loves him as well. Quentin Johnson's another guy who's been all over the map. Uh, there was a lot of buzz that he might be the guy that falls out of the first first round, but I think that's starting to come around here late in the process. Uh, there's just so many small receivers in this class. Uh, Quentin Johnston's one of the bigger ones who you can play on the perimeter with no worries. Um, he did play small at times. I think Scott Barrett, that he really hammered that home in his article uh, that he didn't really play up to that size. But uh, I, I'm thinking some teams think they at least there's a projection there that they can work with something. Uh, so his his number has been it's been coming back here. It looks like maybe like a, a team like the Giants. I linked in my article who have a bunch of smaller receivers could really use a, a bigger receiver like Quentin Johnson. So I see those four guys sneaking into the first round here. here. So I would look at the over three and a half and we're getting a little bit better price here at minus one Oh six. There have been, has been some action towards the under here. I think, I think a lot of it is connected to that Gibbs piece that if Gibbs is going to sneak into the first round, that means maybe one of these wide receivers sneaks out. Uh, but I'll, I'll take the over still. I have no read on this whatsoever. Um, Bob McGinn's piece, I know I've referenced it a lot, but it, it's an influential draft piece every year um, where he talks to the anonymous scouts. And there's scouts in there, and there's always hyperbole in that, which which I always have to. I, I, I think scouts love the fact that there's no filter on that article. <laughs> but there's guys who said it's the worst wide receiver class that they've seen. Um, and that scares me. And I think, like, what Tom was saying, you know, a lot of these guys are small. So many of these guys have like a major deficiency and, you know, Jalen Hyatt, all his production comes out of slot fades, you know, where he has 20 yards of cushion. How do you project that to the NFL? You know, like at Zay flowers is small. Jordan Addison is small. We, we saw, I mean, I don't think Jordan Addison's Devonte Smith, but Devonte Smith is small and he's an elite NFL receiver. Uh, I don't know if, if if people view him as that same level of prospect. Devontae Smith won a Heisman Trophy, but I have no read on this whatsoever. I know Jackson Smith and Jigba is going in round one. And if you were to tell me no other wide receivers drafted in the first round, I mean, I don't, that's probably a plus 1500 outcome, <laughs> but it wouldn't be the, it wouldn't be the most shocking thing to happen in NFL draft history. I think a lot of teams too, have shown us in the past few years at wide receiver, they're not afraid to kind of just make us scratch our heads and go, this guy, really? He's the first receiver off the board. Like, okay, whatever you guys want to do. I like Quentin Johnston to go in the first round. I know. uh, I I think you have a prop on him. Uh, Tom, you love him going to the New York giants. I really like that call. They need someone with size He's a Absolutely. big kid at 6'3", and he would perfectly slot into that lineup because we know Kenny Galladay is dead, 
Darius Slayton is, you know, your week 13 waiver wire. Everyone's injured, you know, addition. But I like that call for you right there uh, on Johnson. Yeah, he, he also has a prop at uh, under 26 and a half, uh, plus 132 on FanDuel, which, you know, if you were looking for a little bit, you know, a, a little bit of a safer bet and you get more outs, uh, you know, with the teams picking in front of them. Uh, I gave out a prop. I, I think Minnesota's, a, I, I have them taking wide receiver at 23. Uh, kind of touched on that a little bit earlier. They don't have a ton of picks. They have Jalen Rieger as uh, their number three receiver right now, which is never good. Uh, so I, and they played, you know, they played 11 personnel 74% of the time last year. That means you're going to have Jalen Rieger on the field that much. You that That's not good. You don't, you don't want to wait until you know later in the draft. You don't have a ton of picks. You traded away a bunch of them for, in the TJ Hawkinson, Hawkinson deal. So I think they are in prime position to take a wide receiver. Ravens are still in a prime position to take wide receiver. They did get Odell Beckham. They need defense back as well, but they could certainly still take a wide receiver. Uh, Chargers are in a spot uh, where they want to upgrade for Justin Herbert. We touched on the teams in the middle of the, the first round there with the Packers, Texans, and Patriots. So there's certainly enough wide receiver needed teams. Maybe if you, you're looking at the Quentin Johnston one, maybe go under 26 and a half as well. Maybe, you know, maybe do like a little, little sprinkle on that Giants one plus 1,000 and then, uh, you know, a, a full bet on that Quentin Johnston under 26 and a half. The first wide receiver draft, and I don't know if we touched on this specifically, but we're talking wide receivers here. Smith and Jigba is minus 430 to be the first wide receiver drafted. I just mentioned that sometimes teams get a little cute. Maybe they don't want a slot guy and they want someone a little bigger. You know, Quentin Johnson's plus 1,100. Addison's plus 1,000. Zay Flowers plus 650. You guys think there's any chance one of those three jump Smith and Jigba to be the first receiver off the board? Uh, I, I I think Jackson Smith and Jigba is probably the best best bet. I, I, I just don't see it. I... I mean, maybe, maybe some team. Uh, I I was saying the Patriots apparently love Zay Flowers. They do pick fourteen overall. Maybe that's the one spot I would think. Uh, you know, maybe. And we know they have no idea what they're doing when they're drafting wide receivers. <laughs> exactly. So they might. They might. Maybe they'll take Josh Downs at fourteen. No, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, maybe that would be the one guy I would I consider plus six fifty. A little bit. A little bit of a long shot, but. You know the Patriots sometimes do this too. We we never know what they're going to do in the draft, and they'll send out signals. Um, you know, wasn't it another Boston College guy a couple uh, last year with Zion uh, Johnson? They were apparently in love with him, and uh, they went completely off the board with the the the, the Division Two guy. Uh, so uh, maybe maybe Zay Flowers a plus six six fifty, but I I would probably stay for, stay away from this and look at JSN. I think he's going to be the first one to go. All right, let me just throw some of Brawley's best bets at you. Again, fantasypoints.com, folks. This is where you find all this great information. This is why you need to be a subscriber to fantasypoints.com. If you go to Underdog Fantasy, throw some money on there. Do some best ball bets as soon as the draft is done. And you say, hey, now I know where these kids are going to play. I want to do a best ball draft. If you use our code FANTASYPTS, we will match your first-time deposit up to $100. And, oh, by the way, for just five bucks. Once you do that, we're going to give you a subscription to fantasypoints.com to read Tom and Joe and Graham and Scott Barrett and Brett Whitefield and John Hanson, everybody's great work over there at fantasypoints.com. So, Tom, some of this stuff here you have Cincinnati Bengals first uh, to draft a defensive back. You already laid some money on this. It's plus 280 at Caesars. Why do you like that pick so much? Yeah, I, I just think that's a, a glaring weakness for them uh, they want to get through there's so many good quarter you know we we went through Aaron Rodgers has joined in the AFC we talked about that at the beginning of the, the podcast here there's just so many good quarterbacks in the AFC they want to get through Patrick Mahomes every year they lost a lot of talent in that secondary uh, both their start, starting safeties are gone uh, a woozie there was some you know some scary not scary but the he might not be uh exactly on the timeline that they want. Uh, so I think they have some pressing needs in the secondary. So I thought that at plus 280, um, I, I touched on the Vikings one. If we're looking at team bets, I mm -hmm. think a sneaky one, I uh, gave it out plus 2000. It's been bet down to like plus 900 now. So it doesn't have nearly the value it, it did have was the Patriots to take a quarterback. <laughs> There's a oh, lot of smoke here recently. Uh, the athletic had a piece. Uh, 
there's a major rift between Mac Jones and Bill Belichick. Uh, Mac Jones was like going outside of the organization for advice on how, how to handle Matt Patricia and uh, Joe Judge last year. Um, yeah, obviously, there's not a lot of trust on the Mac Jones side of things if he's going outside to, uh, you know, talk, get, get outside counsel. Uh, there was rumors from Pro Football Talk that they had shopped him around. Uh, they bring Will Levis in last potential day to do a visit uh, last week. So maybe they're a sneaky team to, to look at quarterback here. And maybe uh, Mac Jones really is on the market, uh, speaking of potential draft day dra trades. So I still, I, you know, it's, it doesn't have as much value as it once did at plus, you know, 20 to 1 odds. But uh, I wouldn't be shocked to see the Patriots do something like that on draft day. Well, um, obviously, Tom, I think the Patriots, um, they're, they're, they're such a wild card to me um, because I, I you can never predict Bill Belichick. That's why the B. John Robinson thing scares the bejesus out of me. That, that, by the way, that would be my least favorite pick in the entire first round if that could happen because this is such a kind of a weak fantasy class in general. Bijan Robinson, this this all time prospect, landing in a spot where he would nuke the value of Ramondre Stevenson, <laughs> who's a young running back who finished as a, the, the RB eight last year, would just uh, mm -hmm. man uh, anybody but the Patriots draft. Uh, and and you know James Robinson would somehow sneak in there and get the goal line carries. Yeah, <laughs> oh. I can just see. I don't know why I see it with Bijan. He's going to end up in like Washington. Like some team that you yeah, just like, they were, the betting they were the betting favorites for a while um, until, you know, the last couple of weeks. They, that was kind of the spot where they, they thought Ron Rivera, he loves to run the football. So they, that was the kind of the, the, the top spot for a long time was Washington. Oh my God. And you know who else, who else loves having two running backs, Dougie Peterson in Jacksonville. Throw them in with ET. Just blow up both their values. Let's go. Nuke not them both. In that. He's no, not he, in that he's not getting to 24. I, I don't think Jacksonville will, will trade up for him. Oh, I, I, let's get nuts. I think they want to get nuts. I do yeah, want Jalen wanna... Carter to Seattle, by the way, with plus 500. I think that's super sharp at fifth overall. I think that's a play that could easily happen there, and you can make some money on it. Yeah, that one, I think it's even higher odds now. There's – because there's been some smoke that Will Anderson could fall in the draft, so I think that they would pref the, the Seattle would prefer Will Anderson, but um, so that one I, I think it even has better odds. I, I can't pull it up here. I'm, uh, Will Anderson's just point. good. People don't like him because he's been good forever, and it's just not sexy anymore to say, "Oh, Will Anderson," just because he's good. You know, it's like drafting Mike Trout in your fantasy baseball league. You're like, "Oh yeah, yeah I guess I'll take Mike Trout, and you know he'll be great," but. No, I want the new sexy name out there. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know that they're exactly comparable, but I, I, I did see a lot of comparisons maybe to, you know, him and Aiden Hutchinson last year. Like, they're both like the sure things. You know what you're going to get. You're going to get a lot of production out of them. But, uh, you know, Tyree Wilson is kind of, you know, this year's Trayvon Walker who has mm -hmm. all the intent, you know, the, the, the all the freak skills and uh, the higher projection and, uh, they're, those two are very comparable, I think, uh, to last year's duo at the top of the draft with the edge rushers. So that was one I gave out was Tyree Wilson plus 400. It's been back and forth. It seems like the Texans and the Cardinals might both prefer Tyree Wilson, but those two teams are also potentially, you know, Cardinals definitely want to trade out a number three. And Houston, nobody knows what the hell they're going to do at number two. So um, I, I like the value of gone on at, at plus 400 with Tyree Wilson, but, uh, it's been kind of sucked out of it now that it's kind of a coin toss between him and Will Anderson. I believe I called him Tyree Jackson earlier. My, my yes, mistake. you did early in the, yes. early in the pod. That's I wasn't old, correct. Yeah. I believe that's an old Syracuse wide receiver. So, a, uh, uh, no, wasn't that the uh, Buffalo tight end who, um, uh, or who am I thinking of? Uh, he's the, with who, the Eagles now. Yeah, yes, he was, yes, Eagles. It, it is a he, he was the he was the Buffalo quarterback, quarterback who who, yep. net, who plays tight end for the Eagles. Yeah, yep. All right, boys. Before we get out of here, give me one crazy thing that you want to see happen on draft night, Joe. Let's start with you. One crazy thing that I want to see happen. I know on one draft. crazy thing, Joe, jumping off a, a roof. No. <laughs> well, so so if Bijan Robinson gets drafted by the Eagles at ten overall. 
I will get drunk and jump off my roof, but I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to make sure I, 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 I have the setup and I have everything kind of perfectly. Tom, Tom's coming down for a golf outing. Oh gosh. Uh, towards the We're middle gonna do of May. It that weekend. That is, <laughs> that is the weekend that I have determined. I will get drunk and jump off my roof because it gives me adequate time to, to do the, um, to, to, to do the setup and to make sure I'm mentally prepared to do it because I'm not just going to, I don't have a pool and I'm not just going to, I'm not dumb enough to, to jump off a let's, 14 foot roof onto a hard ground. Let's, let's um, make sure we get our rounds of golf in first. Just yeah, in case you yeah. like mangle a limb or something. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm thinking like an air mattress or something like that uh, underneath, but uh, it, it will be intimidating anyway. Okay. So one crazy thing that I want to see happen uh, in the NFL draft, mm. let's. I would like to see an unexpected team trade up for Anthony Richardson. Mm, okay, mm. maybe like uh, that. that was my maybe I, Tampa Bay my, from nineteen. That'd be it's nice. Possible, yeah. I'll go back to my Patriots taking a quarterback in the first round. I think that would be uh, quite interesting. Maybe they're the team that trades up and gets Anthony Richardson and. Uh, I do think we're going to see one of these, at least one of these quarterbacks fall out, of the, fall out of the top 10. It once looked like, you know, we could see four quarterbacks go in the first four picks, or maybe the first five picks, but it does feel like we're going to get one of these quarterbacks to fall a little bit. So we could see, a, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a team move up and grab one of these quarterbacks, uh, you know, in that like 10 to 11, 12 range. I, I would not be surprised by that at all. I'm excited for a veteran player to get traded like we saw last year with A.J. Brown. Uh, maybe this year it's on the running backs. That could be DeAndre Hopkins. But mm -hmm. I want to see maybe yeah. Joe Mixon, Delvin Cook, Derrick Henry. I want to see the fantasy Ray Lance, world. Mac Jones. We, we, turned saw out it, the we saw it twice. I was actually going to ask Tom that, and, and we should discuss it just really briefly, Drake, since this is your prediction. Is any of these first-round picks traded for a veteran player? On draft, not night. not a running back. Well, oh, God no. I mean, yeah, I I could see that. I mean, based I, on I think... the class, I mean, you know, like mm, could be. Yeah, There's I... been rumors out of Buffalo that Stefan Diggs is not happy, and it has been oh gosh. kind of <laughs> temperamental. Imagine someone sneaking in and saying, "We'll give you a, a one and some other stuff" because he's already got his contract to Buffalo, and Buffalo can. And add in a uh, couple. Oh my pieces. god! If the Buffalo traded Diggs. Oh my! They would have nothing left at uh, receiver for Josh Allen. Do we don't want to see that. No. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Uh, maybe Seattle draft somebody, and then maybe they move DK. I don't know. We're getting crazy here. You know, we'll get drunk and jump <laughs> off roofs with Joe. But guys, thank you so much. It's been awesome. Uh, good hour of betting talk, folks. So. Go over to fantasypoints.com. Read all of Tom's best bets. Check out all his great work there on Twitter at Tom Brawley. Of course, Joe is at FG underscore Dolan. I'm at Drake Fantasy. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us today on the Two Point Stance.